So, <clears throat> welcome to Learn with Lakhnani YouTube channel. So, I am uh, Prasan Kumar Lakhnani. Here with I am uh, preparing the second video on uh, NumPy, which is very important uh, entry for uh, data science and machine learning and uh, uh, <clears throat> deep learning. So, in the previous video, I have explained ab about uh, uh, what the NumPy, what the, the basic concepts behind NumPy and what is in the NumPy array object, ND array, all the things I have explained in the previous uh, video. In this video, I am going to explain you the practical examples and how to practice the NumPy uh, programs and uh, uh, how to install the NumPy and what are the various methods and various ways of uh, using the NumPy and what are the different NumPy errors and what are the different ways of creating the NumPy errors. All these things uh, uh, I am going to explain in the further videos. Uh, before that, you please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Learn with Lakhnani. And uh, uh, I am going to explain all the examples on Python Jupyter Notebook. So, which is very easy and efficient uh, way of executing the programs. Uh, if you practice on uh, Jupyter Notebook, so that you can find a more flexible, more easy of uh, uh, executing the programs of NumPy. So this is the Jupyter Notebook. First of all, I have installed Anaconda. Then Anaconda, I have opened the Jupyter Notebook. Through this, I am going to explain about uh, the practical uh, examples on NumPy. And you can get hands-on experience after watching this video. I request everyone to please watch this video. And immediately, you just practice uh, the example so that it will be benefit and it will give you more knowledge and what I have explained on the concepts of NumPy. Suppose... If you want, suppose uh, if you want to install uh, NumPy, you have to use the pip command uh, pip install pip install nump pip install NumPy. Then you execute this. If you run this, it will show that uh, requirement already satisfied. That means uh, previously I have installed the NumPy so that it is showing that it is already installed so that the required command is already satisfied. Okay. So first I will tell you. Uh, suppose if you want to, um, if you, I have already installed the NumPy, if you want to see the version of NumPy, you just write import, import NumPy as NP. Here I am printing the version of the present NumPy which I am using in my system. Okay, uh, MP dot underscore underscore version underscore underscore then you just execute it it is the presently i'm using python numpy 1.20.3 so this is the present version which i'm using okay so there are different ways of installing the numpy if you want to install suppose <clears throat> suppose uh, i want to install with a particular version in that uh, if you want to install a particular version you have to use the command like this pip install pip install numpy numpy is equal to is equal to numpy sorry numpy is equal to is equal to suppose i want to install 1.20 point some two version so then you execute it <coughs> that particular version will be installed okay so there are different ways of uh, installing the numpy uh, if you if you use you, you can use you can install through command prompt and also you can install through conda environment there are different ways of installing the numpy in land class i'll explain uh, uh, what are the different ways of installing the numpy okay so first of all what is numpy a numpy what what do you do with the numpy in numpy we'll going to create uh, the nd errors n dimensional errors so the basic element in the numpy is nd array so how you'll create a one dimensional array how do you create a two dimensional array and how do you create
program and the array object a j is equal to here I am writing np dot so you can create an array with the array method in that with the, within now square brackets I will I am creating the elements so 10 20 30 40 50 so these are the elements which I have inserted into the array so here I have created a numpy array import numpy as np so a is equal to here I created a is equal to np dot array of uh, here I have inserted five elements the namely the elements are 10 20 30 40 50 so how I have inserted into the elements so I have a, a, a inserted the elements in the form of a square bracket that means I am providing the elements um, in the form of a list so here I am creating a one dimensional array of size uh, so there are uh, uh, one row and five columns are there okay suppose if you execute this uh, so this will be executed and if you want to print a then the elements in the array will be displayed suppose if you want to know whether it is an empty array or not just uh, you just type uh, a if you write if you know if you want to know the type of a so you can write uh, numpy dot uh, uh, type of a it gives uh, numpy dot uh, ND array that means uh, it is an ND array object uh, of class uh, numpy okay suppose if you want to know that data available if you want to know the data types available in the list uh, in the numpy array so you can just try you can uh, print like this print uh, a dot uh, d type a dot d type so that it will give us uh, that means uh, you are uh, uh, this <coughs> numpy array created uh, with an integer 32 bit 32 bit okay so all the elements are of type for integer 32 bit <clears throat> if you want to see the type if you want to see the shape you can print the shape as print a dot shape so that it will give you the shape the shape will be given in the form of a tuple but when it comes to the one dimensional here you have only one dimension so that's why it is showing the number of elements in the one dimensional array so how many number of elements are there there are uh, five elements are there so that's why it is showing five comma okay so similarly if you want uh, if you want suppose i want to create another array b is equal to b is equal to np dot np dot array np dot array within square brackets one comma two comma three comma four comma five here i have created five elements here i have created five elements okay suppose if you want to give your own data type that means you can give your own data type as d type d type is equal to i can give the my own data type so how i can give so d type is equal to within quotations int i want to create every element in the array of size int 64 so that now you just print b then you got the uh, elements 1 2 3 4 5 so if you want to see the uh, data type of each element you just print b dot <coughs> b dot D type B dot D type so that it is saying that uh, all the elements uh, in the numpy array B are of type uh, 64 so that means a uh, 64 bit okay so here you are asking the data type of uh, the numpy array B so here I have created the numpy array with the data type D type is equal to in 64 so here the D type is D type is equal to it is showing that in 64 so how you will see the data type how you, uh, if you want to know the type of uh, a particular uh, array so here you just write uh, array dot uh, that means uh, the object name dot d type so d type is an attribute so if you apply d type on the object it will show you the type of uh, the type of elements present in the array present in the array okay so here i have created a one dimensional array so this is a one dimensional array that means you have only one two three four five so you have only one row and five columns so if there is only if it is a one dimensional it simply shows in the form of a tuple as five comma so the shape of the numpy array in the numpy will be shown in terms of a tuple Okay, the shape will be shown in the tuple. 
If it is a one dimensional array, it shows simply the number of elements, comma. So a single element in the uh, tuple can be shown like this. Okay. Suppose if you want to, suppose if you want to, to know the number of elements, you just simply use the general function length. So length of A, so it, it is giving the number of elements are 5. Suppose if we apply length of B, it is giving the number of elements in the numpy array are 5 elements. There are 5 elements. Okay. So this is a general purpose uh, function. Okay. So there are different ways of creating the numpy array. We can create the numpy array by using the arrays or you have several methods uh, in order to create the numpy array. Okay. Suppose if I want, uh, uh, suppose here I am creating another array, C is equal to np dot array, np dot array. Here I am creating 12.5 comma 54.6 comma 67.8. So what type of elements these are? These are the elements of type float. All the elements are of the form of float. So uh, you just remember that uh, any array contains homogeneous elements only. Here I have given three float values. Okay. Suppose if you want, uh, suppose if you execute this, uh, so array will be printed. Suppose if you want to know the type of, uh, the type of uh, C, what it is showing? It will show numpy dot and the array. If you want to know the elements type, uh, then you write uh, C dot uh, D type. So here uh, it is showing each element is of type float 64. So all the elements are of type float 64. Okay. Suppose if you want to know the size of uh, each element, you can use uh, the get size method to know the size of the elements. Suppose if you use uh, the uh, size of method, if you want to know the size of the elements, first of all you have to import uh, system import sys import sys so with this command suppose if you want to know the size of the elements print c dot print sys dot get size of get size of a get size of a so it is showing that it is there uh, or the entire array takes uh, one 24 uh, bits okay so this is this is the way you can see the size of the array <clears throat> suppose here we have created uh, another array d is equal to np dot array np dot array of uh, suppose 12 comma 34 comma 56 comma some 78 so what are these elements all these elements are integer type suppose if i want to store these elements in the form of a float Yes, you can definitely write float 64 bit. So now, even though you are given the elements are of type integer, it will be converted to float. Okay. Suppose if you if you want to print the values in the D, so the, the numpy array D is appearing in the form of a float, but not in the form of a <coughs> C. Here I have given 12, which is an integer. Here I got a 12 point, that means it is a float. Here 34 is an integer, but here the output is in the form of a float. Here 56 is an integer, here it is a float. 38, 78 is an integer, it is a float. Why? Because here I have mentioned the clearly the data type of the elements should be in the form of a float. So even though I have given the elements in the form of a list, uh, in the form of an integer, it has shown in the form of a float because I have mentioned the data type as a float. So here uh, I am saying that always the array consisting of similar elements. Suppose I have taken another array e is equal to np dot array np dot array of suppose I have given 12 comma 34 comma 45.5 comma 56.7 comma 16. So you can see you can see that uh, I have given two different kinds of elements. So one is here 12 is an integer, 34 is an integer, 45 is float, 45 is float, 56 is float and then there again 60 is integer. But as per the definition of uh, numpy array, always array consisting of uh, homogeneous elements. But what happens uh, here I have given 
uh, one is integer and one is float. So if I well, if I execute this, do I get any error? No, you will not get any error. You will get uh, the float type of uh, all the uh, by default uh, all the integer values uh, will be promoted to float uh, and uh, simply all the elements uh, in the given array will be printed in the form in the form of a float. That means uh, <clears throat> internally numpy converts uh, if the elements are not in the form of a similar fashion. If the elements are not in homogeneous fashion, then internally numpy converts uh, the lower type into the next higher type level. So here there are two types. One is integer is there and float is there. So integer is promoted to float. Okay, with a plus of originality. We cannot promote float into integer. If you promote float, if you if you demote float into integer, you you will, you will get a loss of information. Suppose if you have 12.5, if you convert 12.5 into in a 12, you will, you are lost the information 0.5. Suppose if you if you convert uh, your 12 into float value, that means 12 to 12.0, you are not you are nothing you are, you are not losing anything. Here you can see. Suppose suppose uh, in my array in my array e. So how many elements I have mentioned? 12, 34, 45.5, 56.7, 56.7, comma 60. So that means these two are integer. These two are float. These two are four. This is integer, no problem. But they are not in. They are not homogeneous. One is to integer, and other one is float. So <clears throat> Python won't give your uh, numpy won't give any error. Your numpy will internally convert uh, your uh, integers into float type. That means uh, twelve point zero. This is thirteen point zero, and forty five point five will be as it is. Fifty six point seven will be as it is, and sixty will be promoted to. 65.0. That means uh, without loss of originality, without loss of data, you have converted successfully the integer into float type. Suppose if you convert float into integer, 45 shall become 45. So that means you are losing 0 0.5. Suppose if you if you bring 57.56.7 uh, into 56, uh, then you are losing 0 0.7. That means uh, there is a huge damage if you lost the information. So without uh, losing the originality of the data, simply the lower level integer will be converted to the float. Okay. So here you are not getting any error. You are not getting any error because of dissimilar elements in the array. So simply the numpy internally converts uh, the lower data type into higher data type. Okay. Suppose if you execute this, if you execute this, if you want to print uh, the value of e, so what happens? Simply, all the elements are converted into. <clears throat> so 12 becomes 12.0, 34 point. This is already float. This is already float. Your 60 integer is converted to float. Suppose if you want to see whether it is converted to all the elements into float or not, you just simply, you just simply write uh, e dot uh, d type. So if you press e dot d type, it is simply showing that all the elements are of type float 64. So even though there are different kinds of elements, numpy internally converts the lower data into higher data. <clears throat> Suppose I have created another numpy array f is equal to np dot array np dot array of suppose 12 is there, 34.5 is there, 67 is there. And I have created another. I have created another element as string. That means how many types of elements are there in this array? Here I am creating this array with integer value, float value, and string value. So there are three things. So basically everything is a string object. So integer, the next integer next to the integer is float. Next to the float is simply string. So uh, all the elements here you will not get any any error even though there are different uh, elements that means different uh, uh, heterogeneous elements present in the array even then you will not get any error you will get the array so all the elements in the array will be converted to, in the form of a string object okay suppose if you print uh, if you print uh, the values of array so see here so simply all the elements have converted into string object so this is a integer so here you can see within the quotations you were you were 12 is there so within the quotations you were 34.5 is there within uh, 67 is converted to 
string object. Your lecturer is also string, is already string, so it is showing the form of a string. That means all the elements are of, are, are converted into string type. So what is the data type? So D type is equal to Unicode 32. So it indicates that uh, the elements uh, are of type string, string objects, string. So that means uh, even though the elements are different, uh, you can present it to the array, but NumPy internally converts into the higher level objects. So that means here all the elements are converted into string object. Okay. Suppose I want to know the shape of f. How will shape shape of f? F dot shape. If you use f dot shape, there are four elements. It is showing four comma. Suppose if you want to see the size of f, you just cite the f dot size. So the size of f is there. so there are four elements are there. So it is showing that the size of the ND array that means the numpy array f is four. Okay. Suppose if you want to know that how many dimensions are there in f, simply write f dot n dim. So dim is an attribute, n dim means n dimensions. Dim is an attribute. If you apply this attribute on the mm, numpy array, it simply returns uh, the dimensions of the the dimension of the array. Suppose what is the dimension of the array? It is a one dimensional. So you have taken a one dimensional array so that it is showing it is an one dimensional array. Okay. So if you want to know the uh, data types, simply you write D type. It gives uh, the data type of the array. So the data type of the numpy array f is object array. That means string object. So it is showing that unique Unicode 32. So this is the way of uh, just knowing the basic information about a numpy array. So here I have created a one dimensional array with the help of numpy array with the with the method array. It is available in numpy. So np dot array of elements. How you are providing the elements? You are providing the elements in the form of a list. Okay. So if it is a one here, I am explaining about the one dimension. So if after creating the array, if you want to know its properties, you just one by one apply the uh, attributes. If you if you apply n dot uh, d type, uh, d type will give you the data type of each element present in the array. Suppose if you want to know the dimension, so you just apply n dot uh, the n dim. And dim, and dim will give you the dimension of the array. If you want to know the shape of the array, just you try. You you just write the uh, uh, array name dot uh, shape. It will give you the shape of the array. Okay. Suppose here here I am creating another array. G is equal to np dot array np dot array within square within a square bracket. So I am mentioning true. True, false, true. That means here I have created a array with the elements boolean type. So what is showing? So you have given the boolean type of array, the boolean type of elements. So it, it won't show you any error. So it will take, it will accept the boolean type and the array type will be boolean. Suppose if you type uh, if you if you want to know the uh, data type of each element, uh, D type, uh, so what happens? It is showing that they are Boolean. Okay. So that means you can write integer, you can write float, you can write string, you can have any combination and you can have Boolean type also. Suppose if I give like this, H is equal to np dot, np dot array, np dot array. Here I am writing 12 comma, 34 comma, 0 comma. 45 comma 89.8 comma 0 so here i have mentioned uh, the data type as data type as data type is equal to bool here i have mentioned the data type is equal to bool suppose if you print uh, if you if you print h uh, so all the here i have given the integer values so what happens here here these are integer values here this is an integer this is an integer, here this is 0, this is an integer, these are all numerical type. But uh, you are asking these elements to be stored in the form of a boolean array, boolean values. So whenever uh, you are uh, asking the elements to be stored uh, in the form of a boolean, so then it means that uh, all non-zero numbers will be treated as true, x, uh, 0 will be treated as false. All non-zero, all non 
zero items will be will be treated as true zero will be treated as false okay so accordingly you have got the answer so what you got here so for 12 it is a non zero so you got true 34 it is a non zero you got true zero it is a zero that's why it is false 12 45 it is a non zero 98.8 it is a non zero that's why you got true so here zero zero is a zero so that's why it gives false so for all the non zero numbers it will give you the boolean value as true for zero it is giving the boolean value and yes false so these are the different ways of creating a one dimensional array so if you want to see the element values in the form of a boolean array you can also use the boolean uh, data type so d type is equal to here i am mentioning d type is equal to bool if you mention d type is equal to bool automatically all the non zero numbers will be converted to true and the zero values will be converted to false okay so i hope everyone is understanding so here in this video i am explaining what are the what is a numpy array and how to create uh, the numpy array and what are the how we can uh, you, uh, how, how we can take the elements uh, of type uh, into the numpy array what are the different uh, data types into the numpy array so here uh, i have explained uh, what is a one dimensional numpy array now i'll explain now uh, what is a two dimensional array so what is a two dimensional array can anyone say so 2d array what is meant by 2d array a 2D array is nothing but a set of a set of one dimensional one dimensional arrays. Simply you have to see a 2D array in the form of a one dimensional array. Say so 2D array is nothing but a set of one dimensional arrays. That means suppose here I have a array, one dimensional array, in that I have three elements, one, two, three. On that, I have created another array. Here I am storing some 4, 5, 6. Here I have created another array, another one dimensional array, 7, 8, 9. So, what happens? It is giving a two dimensional array. So, a two dimensional array is nothing but a set of one dimensional array. Suppose if you see the size, what is size? 3 by 3. What is, what is this 3 indicates? This 3 indicates 3 one dimensional arrays are there. So, this is one, one, one dimensional, this is second one dimensional, this is third one dimensional. So, a 2D array means uh, a set of one dimensional arrays. That means uh, here uh, in, in the given example, the array size is 3 by 3. So, three one dimensional arrays are there in which in each one dimensional there are three elements are there. So, that is actual meaning of a two dimensional. So, as a data scientist, you have to see the insights of the data. So, here the feeling of data, the visualization of the data is very important. So, here in the layman, like a layman, you should not say that a two-dimensional array is a two-dimensional array in which you have rows and columns. As a data scientist, you have to say that a two-dimensional array is not two-dimensional array. It is a set of one-dimensional arrays. So, simply you can see a two-dimensional array is a set of one. This is one one-dimension. This is another one-dimension. This is another one-dimension. If you keep uh, one by one together, it gives uh, a two-dimensional array. Okay, so that means uh, here is how to create a two-dimensional array in the numpy array. So here, this is one dimension. This is one dimension. This is one dimension. That means how we will create a one-dimensional array. So this is the way of creating one-dimensional array. One comma two comma three. So another one-dimensional array is four comma five comma six. Another one-dimensional array is seven comma eight comma nine. So you keep you keep separation between each one dimension and finally you keep uh, all the one dimensions into and the square bracket uh, this gives you a creation of a uh, two dimensional array okay so this is a one dimensional array this is another one dimensional array this is another one dimensional array i have kept all these one dimensional array into and the square bracket uh, so this indicates uh, this double square bracket indicates uh, you have created a two dimensional array so all of you please keep in mind that a two dimensional array is not simply a two dimensional array a two dimensional array is nothing but a sequence of one dimensional arrays okay so in numpy how you will create a suppose how you will create 
So simply we will import import numpy as np. So here I am creating a numpy array a is equal to np dot array np dot array. Here I am keeping the braces. So here how many suppose I want to create a 3 by 3 array. That means 3 one dimensional arrays. So for the first one dimensional array this one. For the second one dimensional array this one. For the third one dimensional array this one. I will keep separation between these two. These three is, uh, one dimensional arrays. So now I am writing 1 comma 2 comma 3. Here I am writing some 4 comma 5 comma 6. Here I am writing 7 comma 8 comma 9. That means uh, a 3 dimensional array is set of one dimensional arrays. So finally I will keep all these one dimensions uh, into the square bracket. Uh, now it gives a two dimensional array. So this is the way of creating a two dimensional array using the array method in NumPy. Okay. So now we will see the practical uh, example. Suppose I am creating import import NumPy as NP. Okay. Import NumPy as NP. So here I am creating a is equal to NP dot array np dot array so this is for the first one dimension then put a comma this is for second one dimension array then put a comma this is for next one dimension array and finally you keep all these three one dimension or three one dimension arrays into two dimension array now in this first one dimension array i am keeping the elements one comma two comma three okay in the second one i am keeping four comma five comma six in the next one dimension i am placing 5, uh, 7, 8, 9. 7, 8, 9. Now, if you print, uh, you can see. So, here the spelling mistake is there. So, you can see the numpy array. Okay. So, this is a numpy array. So, what is the size? So, here you can see this is one one dimension. This is another one dimension. This is another one dimension. So, all these one dimensions are kept in and the square package. So, finally, it gives uh, a two dimensional array. It gives a two dimensional array. That means uh, three one dimensional arrays we have created. Three one dimensional arrays we have created. So this is what nothing but uh, your two dimensional array. Suppose if you want to see the type of the element, the size, size, shape, type. Suppose if you if you write uh, a dot uh, d type. So what uh, what are the element type? So usually all the elements are of type integer okay in 32 bit suppose if you want to size how many elements are there so how many elements are there there are four uh, nine elements are there three rows and three columns three three are nine so suppose if you want to see the number of elements in the array so the size of the array is a dot size okay suppose if you want to know the shape what is shape so this is a two dimensional so it, the shape will be three by three so the in the one dimension it will be only number it is showing the number of elements but when it comes to the two dimension, it is showing three by three. That means uh, three rows and uh, three columns. Okay. Suppose if you want to if you want to see the dimension of the array, so a dot n dim. Suppose if you press a dot n dim, the dimension of the array is two dimension. It is a two dimensional array. So these are the uh, different attributes which are linked with the <laughs> suppose you can create any type of array you can create any data type suppose i want to uh, create a float yes you can create with the float suppose i want to create a float so uh, b is equal to np dot array okay so how many uh one dimensional arrays are let us suppose there are two one there are four one dimensional arrays there are four uh, one dimensional arrays so in that i'm keeping these four one dimensional arrays into and there square brackets here i am writing 12.3 comma 14.6 here i am writing 34 point comma 67.7 in this i am writing 50 point 0 comma 45 point 0 here i am writing 33 point 7 comma 89 point 6 Okay, so again, I am printing array. So you can see the array of type float. Suppose if you want to know whether it is float or not, simply write you b dot 
d type so if you have, if you press p dot type all the elements are of type float if you want to see the shape so it gives 4 by 2 that means 4 rows and 2 columns here what array I have created two dimensional array what is shape 4 comma 2 so 4 comma 2 4 indicates in my array 4 one dimensional arrays are there arrays are there that's what happened here how many how many one dimensional arrays are there there are four one dimensional arrays you can see here this is this is one one dimensional array this is one one dimensional array this is another one dimensional array this is another one dimensional array this is another one dimensional array so here four by in each one dimension how many rows are columns are there there are two columns so four by two so the shape will be shown in the form of a tuple the shape will be shown in the form of a tuple so four comma two okay so like this you can create any type of uh, any type of array suppose if you want to create suppose you can you can mention your own data type also you can mention your own data suppose here i am writing i am writing the data type of the array yeah, another important task is you are, you are not you are not required to write all these in a single line so you can keep you can press enter you can press enter and you can press enter in this way also you can uh, run the program then also you get the same array okay suppose if you want to mention any data type suppose here i am writing d type d type is equal to for fun sir, uh, for fun here i am writing bool here i am writing bool so what happens all the elements are converted into true why because all are non zero numbers so every non zero numbers will be treated internally as true so that's why all the elements are in the form of a uh, boolean array and true okay suppose if there is any one element suppose here i am putting zero uh, somewhere i am putting zero and now i am executing so what happens so wherever you have a zero element that is that we here i have zero in that place false is placed here uh, another zero is there in the place false is there in remaining all non-zero numbers i have got only true 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 that means uh, all non-zero numbers will be treated as a zero uh, true and zero will be treated as a false so in this video i have explained uh, how to create a one dimensional array and how to create a two dimensional array so a two dimensional array is nothing but a sequence of one dimensional arrays if we can able to see a two dimensional array in the form of a sequence of one dimensional array then only you can understand the data so if you want to become a data scientist you have to see the data in different ways you have to see the actual facts of the data you cannot you should not see the data a two dimensional array is a two dimensional array like rows and columns you have to see the two dimensional array in the form of a an array of one dimensional arrays that means a sequence of one dimensional array so then only you can understand okay so here uh, in this video i have explained what is one dimensional array two dimensional array and in the next video i will i will explain you what is a three dimensional array later uh, videos i will explain the slicing operations on the arrays and the arrays okay thank you please stay tuned to uh, lekneni learn with lekneni please subscribe please press bell icon share it and like it uh, please follow all the updates from our channel please, if you subscribe definitely you will get updates so every day you will get uh, updates from the channel you please follow my video i am explaining in a simple manner definitely you will understand please practice after listening the video after completion of the video please open uh, install your uh, uh, anaconda and open the jupyter notebook and you please practice all these examples in the coming classes i will explain more more examples and also explain the real time examples okay please subscribe to my youtube channel learn with technani thank you all thank you for your valuable time thank you for watching my videos so please subscribe to my channel learn with technani thank you thank you one and all